Hi, this is Susie Daphnis and Kat Matson coming to you from South by Southwest Interactive in Austin, Texas. Now, yesterday we had the opportunity to see, you know, there's lots of celebrities and lots of stars, and so we got to see Dana Brunetti, who produced uh, The Social Network, um, Captain Phillips, and most recently, the very, very popular series on Netflix, House of Cards. Now, tell us what he had to say. Oh, geez. He... It was an awesome session and it was one of the really good opportunities where I actually didn't realise just who this person was until he started talking. Um, so, Dana Brunetti, um, traditional producer, you know, he's produced normal film as well and TV series as well as um, now digitally distributed um, content. So that's the first thing that I found interesting. He was talking about how TV show distribution has changed. Um, House of Cards was commissioned by Netflix um, and it's the first TV series that's actually been released all in one hit. Um, it's interesting though because he also said that this, this particular series was filmed like it was a movie just in 13 chapters, um, which I actually wonder is part of the appeal. It's one of, one of the things maybe why we like it so much. Um, so yeah, talking about the digital distribution, he had some interesting things to say around how Probably in the next five years, well at least that was Randy Zuckerberg's leading question, you know, what's the future of TV in five years? He said, TV as we know it will be gone and it will be, it'll be on platforms that we haven't even seen yet, um, which I think is exciting. Um, there's some interesting implications then in terms of revenue models and business models, you know, so House of Cards was made possible because Netflix paid for it based on their subscriber base as distinct to having to get advertisers. So, you know, some really interesting shifts in that whole market. Um, so yeah, from a digital distribution perspective and content creation, I thought that part was really fascinating. What did you take out of the session? Uh, a couple of things he said. One was about the marriage of creativity and technology. Mm. And so for me, the idea of a TV show streamed on the internet is not a big paradigm shifting idea, but for the networks it is because yep. they're so traditional in the way they distribute. Um, the other thing that he said was that when casting people, it's not the total consideration, but who their audience is, is a consideration. So the line, and Randy Zuckerberg was the interviewer, was that remember that your audience has an audience. And I could apply that back to every small business and who you connect with and their audience. And how do you get that person to share? So if you have a leading actor who doesn't use social media, then that's not as advantageous as having someone who has a huge following and is quite active. Well, and it was another conversation around how, um, for him anyway, uh, for Dana, he actually looks for not necessarily celebrities, but for people who have got good social media followings who he knows he can share. It was funny too, that comment about um, every, you know, your audience also has an audience. I actually tweeted that line and I got a reply back with a almost a sarcastic question. Really? This guy was in London, so I replied back and I went, well, you're watching me, watching them. And yes. you're now engaging with me, so yeah, you've just proven the point. Um, and that was quite hilarious because we then engaged and Randy Zuckerberg then um, favourited that conversation on Twitter. So I thought, yeah, you know, point proven well and truly right there in the room. Yeah, and of course, just for uh, Danny Brunetti's credibility, he did say when real actors also have a following, <laughs> it wasn't about, you know, the popularity. And he actually made a really good point about people who are popular through social media who actually don't have substance and don't have a lot of talent. And we've seen a couple of those over the last couple of days too. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was interesting too because that then came up in the whole conversation around crowdfunded films. Um, Randy Zuckerberg, again, who was conducting the interview, she runs her own, you know, just for viewers, yes, she is Mark Zuckerberg's sister, but she's now running um, a media company totally separate to Facebook. And she pointed out, well, actually, I think it was Dana who pointed out that 30% of the films at Sundance this year were crowdfunded. Now that's awesome because it means that filmmakers don't have to wait for the for the production houses to back them. But what Dana was saying too is it's interesting, don't give away incentives like walk-on roles or associate producer titles and all that kind of thing because all that does is essentially dumb down the production quality and dumb down the craft that is being an actor or a producer or a director. Um, I thought that was a really interesting insight because I see a lot of... Um, crowdfunding campaigns in all sorts of industries get caught up in giving away incentives, giving away the kitchen table, kind of going, please, 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 come mm. on board, back the project. Whereas Dana's perspective, which was similar to mine, has always been, pitch the idea. That's it. Pitch the idea. If people like the idea, they'll come and support it. But you don't need to give away all these bonuses. Right, and that you'll get funding if you create a really, really good product. And I think that goes for anyone looking for funding for their project or their business idea. Just because the platform is there, it doesn't mean that you will get funded. You still need to have something that's worth funding. It's got to be a good idea, exactly. Yeah. 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 Great. Thanks for joining us here at South by Southwest. We'll be back with more news soon.